We are doing this for the good of the patient. There's the need to uh, properly train laboratory personnel so that they will come out of accurate results. There's also the need for continuing education of laboratory personnel, uh, licensure, certification of the, the personnel, so that they are up to date with information and they, their competencies are well grounded. Good morning, you are welcome. Thank you. Uh, please be under your name. Alma Semenya. Okay. The doctor has referred you to the laboratory for us to collect your blood sample mm -hmm. and to find out whether you've got malaria parasites in your blood or not. Okay. We're going to prick your middle finger uh, to collect the blood sample from you and then to be able to carry out the investigations that we need to do. So that's what, exactly what I'm going to do. First of all, let me get the slide. I'm going to label the slide with the patient's name, the date and time of collection of the sample. Um, uh, this is called an alcohol swab. Okay. It contains what we call 70% uh, ethyl alcohol. It is used to clean the finger that I'm going to prick so that if there are any bacteria on that particular finger, we'll be able to clean it so that it doesn't contaminate the blood that we are going to collect. Are, are, you, are you okay with that? I'm okay with that. Okay. I'll clean your middle finger. I'm cleaning it to make sure where I will prick. It's a little wet. I'll wait for it to dry before right. I prick with the lancet. Yep. So this is called a lancet. Mm -hmm. It's very sharp. I'm going to prick you mm -hmm. so that I'll be able to collect the blood sample from okay. you. Please make sure to dispose of the lancet in a biosafety box. I clean the first blood off, off with the tissue and then I squeeze it. So I'm collecting the blood in here. I'm placing a drop of the blood here for the 10 film and then three drops of the blood for the thick film. I'm using the glass slide as a spreader to prepare the 10 film. At an angle of 45 degrees, 
you prepare the tin film and then you use the edge of the same slide to make the thick film. Amma, thank you very much for your cooperation in the sample collection. We are going to process your blood sample that we've collected okay. uh, to find out whether you've got the malaria parasite in your blood or not. And then come back in one hour's time today, in an hour's time. Okay. By that time, we'll have finished processing the sample and we'll give you your result to take back to the doctor for uh, further action. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. We are going to prepare working gym sustain. You will take 10 milliliters of the stock gym sustain and then you add 90 milliliters of buffet distilled water to make a total volume of 100 milliliters. This is a 50 ml serological pipette. So I'll prepare 50 initially and then add 40 ml. This comes to a 1 in 10 dilution of the stock Jimsa stain. We now have the working gym sustain, which I am going to pour into the coupling jar that we'll be using to stain the thick and thin blood film. I am going to fix the thin blood films in methanol for four to five seconds. If it's in the second slide, also for four to five seconds. I am now going to the hemoglobinization of the thick blood film. That is immersing it in water to dehemoglobinize the red cells. I will now immerse it in the one in ten working gymsa stain and we'll stain it for twenty minutes. At the end of the 20 minutes standing period in the working gym stain, by means of a forceps, remove the stain slide and transfer it into uh, a coupling jar containing water for rinsing the slide. Rinse it for 30 seconds. and then remove it from the rinsing water and then send it to the 
drying rack for it to air dry. This is the binocular microscope. It is a light microscope for examining the blood films for to detect malaria parasites in the film. It has a lens system, the head, which is usually inclined. We have the body, we have the stage, the diaphragm, and then the lens system. In order to be able to see the parasite very well, you need to clean the lens system so that you'll be able to see the parasite well. After cleaning the lens system, you get your slide, you place a drop of oil emission on the thick film as well as the thin film. And then you place it on the stage, put the oil emission lens in place, and then focus initially where the oil touches the times 100 objectives. From there, you start looking out for the malaria parasites. Malaria microscopy is being a method that has been used from time immemorial and it will continue to be the mainstay for malaria microscopy in the sense that you will be able to detect the malaria, the parasites, the parasite that causes malaria, that's the plasmodium species, you'll be able to detect it and you'll be able to identify all the different stages it will allow you to also identify the different species of the plasmodium which causes malaria in humans. Microscopy is quite inexpensive, cost-effective and economical and it's also sensitive. It can be used to monitor uh, treatment failures, it can be used as a follow-up in whatever investigation that is being done. It's used also in epidemiological studies for certain interventions that want to be in place. You can also use it to monitor drug resistance to anti-malaria drugs. So malaria microscopy is ind indispensable.